The Pitmaster is an open source wireless thermometer based around a Raspberry Pi Pico W. The overall hardware schematic looks like this. The Raspberry Pi Pico connects the two Mac 6675 converter boards. These boards connect to K-type probes and converts them to a digital signal as an SPI serial interface, which can be set up on the Pico. When you purchase the Mac 6675, it tends to come with a probe that has quite a short probe length and a short lead. While this is fine for monitoring the temperature of the barbecue pit, I would recommend getting at least one additional probe which is longer and pointed at the end to insert into the meat. K-type probes have a standard output, so you can get these in a wide variety of shapes, sizes, diameters, and flexibilities that should all work. However, note that they sometimes have different terminations, so you might have to find something that works or modify one so it works. The screen I used is a small OLED display called an SH1106. It has one color and the resolution is 128 by 64, which is plenty for this application. It connects to the Pico with I squared C. You could power everything with USB, but I wanted to include a battery as well. The power circuit is based around a charging board called an LXLC BST. It simply connects to the battery positive and negative and the power out positive and negative. In addition to delivering a steady voltage, it also allows me to charge the batteries with USB-C and provides an indicator light. I included a small diode to stop the voltage from feeding backwards towards the board when I do plug the Pico in, and I also included a switch to allow me to easily turn everything on and off. To assemble everything, I first soldered the Mac 6675s and the Pico to some perf board that ran my connections. I also wanted everything to be robust and rugged, so I got this clear hard case. I cut holes for the probes and ran the leads through these waterproof cable glands. I also cut a hole for the on-off switch, which came with a waterproofing silicone cover. Since the case is clear, I just mounted the tape to the inside of the front cover with some double-sided mounting tape. Although I wouldn't throw this in a pool, I'm pretty confident that it could handle rain without too much trouble. The program for the Pico, pitmaster.ino, was written in Arduino, which is a version of C++. There are pre-made libraries for both the Mac 6675 and the SH1106, so I can just import those and initialize them. Arduino IDE makes compiling and uploading the code very easy. Every two seconds, the Pico reads data from the thermometers and changes its internal temperature variables, which it updates on the screen of the Pitmaster. In order to have wireless capabilities, the Pico also creates an access point, which acts like an API. After you connect to the network with the correct SSID and password, you can go to 192.168.1.1. This will give you a JSON of the temperature of both probes. While you can't just monitor temperatures this way, I also use two Python programs to collect and visualize this data. Collect.py will simply go to the API at a regular interval, get the temperatures, add a timestamp, and append it to the next line in a text file. Although the Pitmaster updates every two seconds, you can change the rate of data collection. I found that every 20 seconds is a good interval for a multi-hour cook, providing plenty of data without becoming too burdensome. Once collect.py is stopped, it will call graph.py, which will convert the collected JSON into a pandas data frame and create a graph with matplotlib. This is a recent cook I did of a brisket over about 13 hours. I can see that my cooker temperature was quite volatile at the beginning, while the cooker and the water pan were coming up to temp, but were much steadier once I got the vents dialed in. This green patch is from 225 to 275 degrees, which is a standard range for smoking low and slow. I can also see how my meat hit a stall coming up to 165 for a few hours before continuing to climb to finish temperature. All in all, I think this project was a great learning opportunity and was much cheaper than many commercially available digital thermometers, especially ones with wireless capabilities and multiple probes. It's also fully repairable and fully hackable, so you can modify it however you want. For all of the code, a full breakdown of costs, and a more complete write-up, see the GitHub repo linked in the description.